the Oaks, a house in the country which I rented for the summer. As an author, I write tales of mystery and murder. But the things that happened in this house were far more fantastic than any story I've ever had published. I brought a staff of servants from my city apartment and my maid, Lizzie Allen, who had been with me nearly 20 years. Lizzie! Yes, Miss Cornelia? Is the car ready? It's at the door. Look, Miss mm -hmm. Cornelia, them servants you brought from the apartment are talking about walking out on us. Really? Well, I know they don't like it here, but I didn't uh, think it was that bad. Well, they've been hearing things about the killer that the police call the Bat and the murders that he committed here this past winter. Now people are saying that he's back again. Well, how can they be sure of that? Has he committed another crime? No, not yet, but that ain't saying that he won't. Here's something else. You've heard about the bats they have here. Animal bats, the kind that fly. Yes, yes. Look what it says in this magazine. This is a report from the state health department, and it says some of them bats is rabid. Well. And that ain't all. Now there's a rumor going around that it was the bat himself, the killer, I mean, that released the rabid bats in this neighborhood. Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, the housekeeper, the cook, the butler, and the upstairs maid don't think so. Well, I can't help but they think. If hysterical nonsense like that can scare them out of their good jobs, it's their loss, not mine. Come on, Lizzie, I've got to get to the bank. I'll drive directly to Zenith Bank, Warner. I'm afraid we'll have to hurry. It's near closing time. I'll get you there, Miss Van Gorder. Thanks again. Miss Van Corder. How do you do, Mr. Barry? How are you? I'm very well, thank you. You remember Lizzie Allen? Of course. Hello, Miss How Allen. How do you do? So you're spending the summer with us again? Yes, yes. I've leased the Oaks, the home of your bank president, John Fleming. I heard you had. I was surprised. Mm -hmm. Why? Is there something the matter with it? No. I was surprised because Mr. Fleming said he would never rent it. Oh? Well, I rented it from his nephew, Mark Fleming, who has the real estate office here. He said his uncle would be gone the entire summer. Uh, that's right. Mr. Fleming's in the North Woods now with his physician, Dr. Wells. Oh, pardon me. Dale, I want you to meet my wife. We were married at Christmas time. That must have been nice. Believe me, it was. Oh, here she is. Oh, uh, my wife, Miss Van Gorder, Miss Allen. How do you do, Miss How Bailey? do you do? <laughs> Cornelia Van Gorder. Yes. Oh, well, I've read every murder mystery you've ever written. I just adored that weird one, The Private Morgue of Dr. X, even though it gave me the shivers. <laughs> Only the shivers? Scared hell out of me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I, I, I really mean that uh, Miss Corny killed them off in that one. When you refer to my books, please don't call me Miss Corny. Pardon me, Mr. Bailey. Mr. Hines is here to see you. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Excuse me, please. Oh. Don't be strangers now. No, oh, no, we won't. Not. Oh, so you're a bride. Well, not quite. <laughs> not since Christmas. You know, I'm sure I've seen you. Well, I, uh, I used to be my husband's secretary here in the bank. Of course I remember. May I welcome our most distinguished visitor back to Zenith? Oh, that's very charming, but... Um, uh, Lieutenant Anderson. Lieutenant Anderson, of course. Chief of Detectives of the Zenith Police Department. This is Miss Allen. Miss Allen. How do you do? Lieutenant Anderson is one of our favorite citizens. He's on the bank's board of directors. <laughs> Not bad for a policeman. You must have made a good thing of it. Oh, <laughs> well, I saved my money, if that's what you mean. <laughs> it's near closing time, and I've got some business in the safe deposit vault. Uh, uh, please come and see me, Mrs. Bailey. Oh, I'd love to. And you, Lieutenant. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Nice to meet you. My, what a charming woman. She moved into the Oaks just the other day. <laughs> that house is a proper setting for a writer of mysteries. Oh, it certainly is. <laughs> Vic, what's the matter? Come in here, both of you. Yeah. 
Andy, we're in trouble. Wendell Hines came in to pick up $350,000 worth of bonds that we were holding as collateral for a loan. They were kept in our special vault. Mr. Fleming and I are the only officers of the bank who have access to that vault. So? The Hines bonds are gone. That's not all. Other negotiable securities are missing. From what I can gather short of a careful check, the bank has been looted of over a million dollars worth of securities. You'll have to notify Fleming. I wish I could talk to him. Unfortunately, he and Dr. Wells are deep in the woods. They can't be reached by phone. What is it? I thought I heard someone on the path coming from the lake. Had an idea it might be that guide of ours. Oh, Sam won't show up until morning. It's a 20-mile canoe trip from here to civilization. Five will get you ten. Sam has a message for me. I thought you told him at the bank not to bother you. I did. But they'll bother me. Doctor. Yes, John. What would you do for half a million? Anything short of murder. Why not murder? Too messy. Too great a risk? For half a million? Yes. I pinched a million from the bank. Well, I'm not kidding. I embezzled it. Not that I think you wouldn't do it if you thought you could get away with it. I got away with it. I'm not talking about currency. I took negotiable securities that could be converted into cash. I have the cash, in tens, twenties, and hundreds. Well, I'm your doctor, not your lawyer. Why tell me this? You'll find out why. Who's going to take the blame for the robbery? Bailey, the cashier. They'll never suspect me. I like Bailey. Well, so do I. I love the guy. I gave him his first chance. He has a lovely little wife. A charming girl. Was the best man. Where's the million? In my family's tomb in Zenith, in the crypt with my father's casket. I don't buy that, John. No? No. You forget that I had you in charge when you were a very sick man, when you raved in delirium. And I heard you talk about a hidden room. Now, where else could you put a hidden room except in that mansion you built, that uh, white elephant you call the Oaks? Look, everyone knows I have a bad heart. Now, who would doubt it if you wired the bank directors that my heart had failed, that I had fallen from a great height here in the woods, and that I was badly smashed up? You could uh, ship the body back for burial and uh, instruct them not to open the casket due to the condition of its contents. Well, you realize, of course, that uh, we'd have to have a body to put in that casket, which means that we'd have to deal with an undertaker at this end. Of course. Well, where do we get a body? Couldn't we provide one of our own? How about Sam? Sam, our guide? Sam weighs about as much as I do. He's practically a hermit. He wouldn't be missed for a long time. The local undertaker would know him. Not if we made him look as if he'd been in a serious accident. But if Bailey's going to take the blame, why do you have to do this? A jury might acquit him. In that case, I'd be a logical suspect. I could disappear, of course, but it's safer if they think I'm dead. What if I don't go for this deal? In that case, it would be too bad. You mean you'd kill me? What else could I do? Now that I've told you about the million, I'd say you were shot in a hunting accident. Now look, doctor, if you can find another body instead of Sam's, it's all right with me. There's half a million in it for you. I'll do my best. I smell smoke. So do I. What's that noise? Look, Doctor, the woods are on fire. It's 
coming this way. We've got to get out of here. Out the back way. We will. As soon as I provide that body we were talking about. Snorter. The wind nearly blew the door off its hinges. Well, that noise blew my game higher than a kite. I think I've lost some of the cards. Oh, I'll get them for you. Oh, I see you found the paper. Drat that paper boy. Scooting by on his bicycle, just chucked it into a couple bushes and let it go at that. For land's sake, Mr. Vic Bailey's been arrested. Oh? I think. Victor Bailey, vice president and cashier of the Zenith Bank, was arraigned before United States Commissioner Alvin Fielding, charged with the embezzlement of over a million dollars. I can't believe Vic Bailey had anything to do with that robbery. Oh, well, I see our landlord is home again. Landlord? Mr. Fleming. Oh. Dr. Malcolm Wells is back in town with the body of John Fleming, president of the Zenith Bank who was killed in a forest fire. Mr. Fleming will be laid to rest in his family's tomb on Friday. And I hope he stays there. Well, why shouldn't he? Well, this is his house. And ever since he died, some funny things have happened here. For instance? The housekeeper, the cook, and the butler said that they heard strange noises at night. And the upstairs maid swore that she met a man without a face coming up the back stairs. Oh, so that's why they quit and left me to run this place without a staff. They didn't tell you, Miss Corny, but the truth is they were scared to stay. But you were still here, Lizzie. Haven't you seen anything? No. No, and even if I had, I ain't afraid of ghosts. They're afraid of me. Honest, Miss Corny, a spiritualist told me once that ghosts was allergic to me. That feller they keep talking about in the paper, I... I guess he'd be different. No, I don't think you'd have the same effect on him. Oh, dear. What are they trying to do? Drive people away from this part of the country? Why, what does it say about the bat? Specialty seems to be killing women. My goodness, two of them in one night. All his victims died the same way, like their throats had been ripped open with steel claws. That's a charming little caper. I'll have to try it sometime. In a book. That ain't nothing, just something bumping against the house. <laughs> 